ChiefFPV, thank you for five dollars super chat. Why did you choose to go with the BMI 270 instead of the ICM 2062 on your new JBF7 flight controller? Did you know there's a new uh, V2 of the JBF7 flight controller? We finally updated it. One of the things we updated. <laughs> was the gyro. Uh, it has a BMI 270 gyro on it instead of the ICM 2682. Uh, it's got a, a barometer on it now. We are going to be moving towards getting INAV target, we hope. But, um, we hope. Uh, but, uh, it got, got plugs on the bottom for people who don't like to solder. You pl have plugs for easy swap. Uh, and one of the things that we did was uh, we raised the price. And this relates to the question about the BMI gyro. So um, I don't remember the exact number, but they came to me and they said, uh, if you want the ICM, they said MPU 6000 is not an option. Not an option. We don't, we're, we're not, we don't have them. Um, somebody told me, so if you look at iFlight, they've switched all their, all their flight, iFlight's the manufacturer of this, in case that's not like it's a secret. They switched all their flight controllers over to the BMI gyro. They're not using the ICM, they're not using the MPU anymore. Um, they said MPU 6000 is not an option, we just literally can't get them. Um, they said ICM gyro is an option, but the price is going to go up by, and I don't remember the amount. Uh, but to have ICM gyros on there, it would have been more expensive. And the board is already $85. Um, it's already $85. And let me tell you, it used to be $50. The reason it's $85 instead of $50 is 100% because the cost of the parts that go into it has gone up. So this, this SD card tray, this MAX chip here, the OSD chip, these inductors, the voltage regulators, right? This USB plug, this chip here, whoa, yeah, this little gyro, this little uh, barometer here, you know, this is, I don't know what it is, like a $5 chip. That's, that's like, that's their, I don't remember the exact number. So people who are going to don't, don't go in the chat and be like, well, that's ridiculous. I don't remember. But like every single one of these components that you see here has doubled or tripled or more in price in the last year. And so, uh, so that's why the price of the flight controller went up to $85. Chip shortage. Mystery D, you're mistaken, my friend. Res with all due respect. Mystery D says the BMI 270 sucks. Tell them what the pin and gyro limits are. Mystery D, you are... Ex with all due respect, sir. You are excessively focused on numbers. Yes, the BMI 270 only goes up to 3.2K. No, that does not actually affect its ability to, to work. Um... Especially now that the Betaflight devs have changed the built-in hardware filter to be 250 hertz, the same as the other gyros are. And if you don't believe me, you can believe Chris Rosser. Who, who, who would uh, disagree with Chris Rosser? Chris Rosser did bench tests where he measured the frequency response of the gyros and found that... B the MPU 6000 and the BMI 270 delivered equal performance at low frequencies, and both the MPU 6000 and the BMI 270 were better than the ICM 2602. Okay? Now that's just a bench test, but... The thing is that when you're running at 3.2 kilohertz, the reason the BMI 270 used to perform worse is in part because the built-in low-pass filter was up around 800 hertz. I don't remember the exact number. The Betaflight devs and Betaflight's filtering was tuned for fil uh, gyros with a built-in low-pass filter around 250 hertz, which is what the MPU and the ICM gyros did. Betaflight has been updated to now ch tell the gyro to change its low-pass to 250 hertz. So. 
the fact that the BMI 270 only runs at 3.2 kilohertz instead of 8 kilohertz is not affecting its performance. That's my opinion. And anyway, nobody can, good luck, uh, you know, getting, you're going to see the ICMs going out of stock. There are still our flight controllers out there with ICM gyros on them. They're, in my humble opinion, they're going to go away because what I'm hearing from manufacturers is that the price of those gyros is going up to the point where it's not feasible. And the BMI gyros, for whatever reason, are still available. Anyway. Um, Mystery D says, well, say what you want, but if it has a BMI 270, I don't want it. I mean, that's that's certainly, it's your money, it's your quad, you can put whatever you want on it. Um, if it, I would say if you think it's bad, uh, you, you, I mean, there's no feasible way to do a blind test for most people, because you need to build two identical quads with two identical flight controllers, one with a BMI and one with an MPU or, or an ICM, and then you'd have to pid tune them blind, not knowing which was which, and you'd have to see if you could tell a difference. But frankly, I, I, I actually question the validity of a test like that, because you're going to put motors on these two quads, right? And one of them's going to have a bearing that's slightly worse than the other. And that's going to be the limiting factor on how far you can push your filters and your PID, PID, gain, PID gains. And then you're going to conclude, oh, the gyro was worse or the gyro was better. And I just, I don't think that's valid. What happens when the BMI gyro goes away too? I don't know, van life. We'll figure out something else to do. Bannister Post, you do not need to change your filters if you're using an MPU 6000. Again, the Betaflight devs in Betaflight 4.3 have made a change to, they they can, they can found out that they could configure the gyro to match the other configuration that they were used to. Okay, continuing on, Cheech FPV's question, uh, continuing the question, what's your filter recommendation to run the BMI 270 on Betaflight 4.2? Um, Cheech, if you are running the BMI 270 on Betaflight 4.2, then you should make a change to the filters. Um, and Chris Rosser has a recommendation. Uh... Or actually, we don't even need to do that because they have, there's a beta flight. Hang on. So if you're using the BMI 270 on beta flight 4.2, what you should do is go into the presets tab. Hang on. Uh, and if we just search for BMI 270, you can choose this, Deuce King's BMI 270 filter settings. Uh, and this will make the changes that you probably need. Uh, yeah, there's a preset for it. So that's what I would do. But only on Betaflight 4.2. In fact, well, he's marked this as 4.3. I'm not sure I, that adds up to me. Well, let's go look at what Chris Rosser recommended then. There's a, there's just one change that you, here we go. So this is what Chris Rosser recommends, again, on Betaflight 4.2, not 4.3. Set gyro low pass two to 250 hertz by quad if you have noise issues. Again, Betaflight 4.3 changes the low pass filter in hardware and you do not need to do this on Betaflight 4.3. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. D, I don't, you'll have to give me a source for that quote. Chris Rosser said, according to Mr. D, Chris Rosser said, stick with 8K no matter the firmware. You have to give me a source for that quote. It obviously wasn't this video about the BMI gyro. Um, since the BMI gyro doesn't do 8K. I mean, the context for that quote must be a discussion of gyros that support 8K filtering or 8K sampling. Uh, he may have been saying versus 32K. 
He may have been saying, stick with 8K, don't use 32K. But he explicitly says, I mean, if you're going to, he explicitly says that the BMI gyro is as good as the MPU 6000. So I think you're taking that quote out of context, Mr. D. Uh, Mr. D says, my issue is less with the BMI 270 and more with vendors advertising MPU 6000 and shipping a product with a BMI. Uh, Mr. D, I know Diatone advertised the MPU 6 series and shipped it with the 6500. I don't know anybody who's shipped uh, with a BMI. Uh, I mean, a absolutely, some vendors are switching the gyro and many stores may not update the product page to reflect the new the new hardware. Um, obviously, people should advertise the product that they're shipping. No, I'm not going to argue with you there. Um, but you specifically said, I won't buy one that has a BMI. So you, you have an issue with the BMI. That's your prerogative.